we're hurting just the same as you. Johannes Lamp lost a son, a brother, and a nephew to suicide, but still he sees hope. We are not alone. We are a whole nation, and, and we can work together. According to the group that represents Canada's Inuit, the suicide rates in different Inuit communities range from 5 to 25 times the national rate. This new strategy is the first time the whole Inuit community has come together to try to tackle the problem. The plan identifies priorities, like addressing risk factors such as inadequate housing and poverty, reconnecting youth to language and culture, and it calls for understanding of the trauma that so many Inuit have experienced. Whether it was abuse at residential school or the hurt about being relocated and never being able to go back to your homeland. It's a story Natan Obed knows personally. His family was among those forced from their home in Labrador in the 1950s. The next generation of Inuit saw suicide rates begin to rise. And that is the root cause of why suicide exists the way that it does in our communities, because we're still searching. That history of forced mass relocation brought tears to the eyes of Canada's health minister. But the way out it involves acknowledging that traumatic history, as we are doing here today, and there are lessons in our painful past, and the painful past is what helps us to rebuild. Consider, though, that tackling overcrowding alone would, by Obed's group's estimate, cost $1 billion. Right now, what the government has offered is $9 million for new mental health services for Inuit. Still, that money and this moment feels significant to many here because it was Inuit who took a leading role in deciding how the money will be spent. That sense of ownership, of leadership, is what everyone here hopes can actually lead to saving lives. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Kujuwak, Quebec.